Hi guys, uh, Will Terry here, and today's video is going to be called "Is Capitalism Good for Artists?" Uh, the comic. This is the Comic Con video number three in the series that I'm making. Um, my road to Comic Con. There's a playlist that you can access um, on this channel, and also you can go back and and look at the other videos if you haven't seen number one or number two. Uh, before I get started, I do want to, if I can reach this, show you that I did pick up this cool little Canon S120, which is the video that I'm going to be, or the camera that I'm going to be using to shoot video for this vlog uh, when I go and do Comic-Con or when I go to the printer, printing press and show you stuff there. And who knows what else I'll use it for, but... um. Anyway, that was recommended by Casey Neistat's channel. I love that guy, and I follow his channel. And he's a he's an expert on equipment, and he's got you know like twenty cameras. And so uh, that's a really good one. I took his advice, and so far so good. It's got this. Let me show you one more thing really quick. The big screen on the back, so that when you turn it on, you can see how big that screen is. Anyway, there we go. Okay, so cool. And uh, another thing I'll update you with is that my next, I think it's going to be my next video or the one after that for sure. I will have, I will either be at the printer or I'll show you prints and hopefully t-shirts um, that I'm getting printed up for Comic-Con. But I'll talk more about that towards the end of this video. Um so let me just kind of dive into the topic. This is kind of, for some people, I think this is going to be a little bit controversial because lately, uh, I almost said communism, capitalism has kind of gotten uh, a black eye. I don't, I don't want to talk about this in terms of the politics of capitalism or, or in that sense. I want to talk about capitalism in the sense that of what's going to be most likely to happen in your life, what, what is going to affect you um, the most, and I'm definitely not talking about crony capitalism, or the corporate welfare that that large companies get, um, or the environmental impacts that that happen. Um, those are all real issues. Those are um, those are things that need to be solved. And uh, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the simple idea of 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 capitalism and how that affects you as an artist. So um, the reason that I'm making this video is because I think, you know, I have a lot of students both at the university and online at SVS and I've got links to that right below here. Um, and, you know, I see I see these, uh, these guys entering into a marketplace and there's a lot of ideas being thrown around right now, especially with the internet and social media. Um, and I, unfortunately, I see people where I feel like they're heading down a bad road of, you know, I can't make a living. I can't. I can't do anything. And they get this fatalist attitude. And I want to, you know, that I I really try to put a positive spin on everything, because um, I really do see the the good in so many things. And I want to share that with you. Um, so some some ideas that I see being floated around are this idea of free tuition that, you know, people want colleges to be free. And there's I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting that to happen or to be affordable. Um, I, I think that there are problems with it. Again, I'm not going to get into the politics of that, but I will say that where capitalism might be going wrong or where the regulations on capitalism or on, um, tuitions and things like that, uh, might be raising and, and becoming out of price. You're seeing online schools like, for instance, ours, um, at $14.99 a month. I mean, who cannot afford that? I mean, that's what capitalism has done. Be, you know, 10 years ago, uh, not possible. But through capitalism and the free market, bandwidth has gone up. Prices for bandwidth have gone down. Um, computer processing speeds have gone up. Uh, video equipment has gone down. Um, video editing equipment has gone down. Things like this, having a little, like almost like a sound studio in your home, y it was never... It never happened. To have a mic this good, you used to have to go to a radio station or to a recording studio or something like that. And now people just have them in their homes um, to vlog, to communicate, to teach. Um, and that's all. I, I see that as a byproduct of capitalism. I see the price of online schools like Chris Oatley's, like Noah um, 
um, Noah Bradley, and uh, just so many others uh, out there that are doing amazing things for students at a very low price. Now, I'm not saying that it's a replacement for a university um, training. It's very different, and I actually made a video on that if you want to search back. I can't remember the name of it, but if you go back through my videos, I kind of did a pros and cons list. There are some people who cannot get to a school or do, who do not have the money or the time to take a, a traditional art school approach, and online is a really good alternative for them. Um, you'll also hear people say, we need to get off capitalism. Um, I don't really understand that. How, we, how would we ever get off of capitalism? I think that that's a wrong... That's an idea that, one, and a lot of these, I think, are a waste of time. Um, we're never going to get off of capitalism. Capitalism existed since the beginning of time when uh, the first caveman traded a club for uh, a drumstick of meat. You know, I mean, that's, that's, that's the way people get things done. And when governments get in the way, and, you know, I, I, I'm getting a little political here, but I'm, I'm trying not to... <laughs> um, even in the Soviet Union, um, there was a black market. You could get anything you wanted via capitalism running underneath. Um, and so it's it's going to always be there. So I one of the reasons why I want to talk about this for artists is because I feel like you're wasting your time if you're waiting for some magical thing to happen where we get off capitalism and all of a sudden you start making more money as an artist because somehow, somewhere, some way, someone's going to start paying you more for doing what you what you do. It's just not going to happen that way. It's a waste of time to think that. Um, another one that you'll hear is is the rest of us should have more of that rich guy stuff. Um, I'm 50 years old next in May. I'll be 50. I used to hear this from some of my family members 40 years ago, of wanting to get at rich people's money. And so far, they're still poor. Um, it, that that's not going to happen either. So it's I feel like it's a waste of energy to be waiting to put yourself on hold and to say, well, you know, what, yeah, it would be great to have s some nice things that you didn't have to work for. In some ways, in some ways, that's not a, a really good thing to have. Um, you'll hear people talk about building this kind of utopia where people don't have to work anymore, where everything's automated. Um, I, I think, again, that's a waste of time to kind of think about that. Meanwhile, while you're waiting for this magical thing to happen, for the right people, person to be elected into office, um, there are someone that's grinding it out that is going to be making a lot of money with their art next year. Um, some people say that the American dream is dead. Um, there's now a world dream. I think it's interesting that if you look, and I, I'm not sharing my screen right now but if you go and look at the artist and a lot of you most of you probably are already going to recognize this name i'll put a link to it um lois lois van bartel um the danish artist who and she just launched a kickstarter and i had that here somewhere when i looked last she was at one hundred sixty-six thousand dollars on her art book she's just making an art book and so far in two days she's raised one hundred sixty-six thousand dollars. she was at one hundred thirty thousand dollars in two hours um, so the American dream, cause Kickstarter's here in the U S is now branching out to other countries. And I think that's awesome. Um, I, I, I think artists like her, uh, I've mentioned her before, but I've mentioned a lot of other amazing artists on this, uh, on this vlog. And the, 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 the thing is you'll see a lot of people just grinding it out, just putting their head down and getting to work, working on their craft. Meanwhile, there's other people that are making excuses for why they can't get ahead. And there it's hard. I'm not going to pretend that it's not hard. I've talked about that a lot before. It is very hard to become noticed and to become a, an artist where, you know, you're you're able to live off of what you create and what you're doing. Um and there's ways to to work on that and I've talked about that in other videos. Um but to to make an excuse that you can't possibly do it is is not true because there's always new artists coming out every year that are doing amazing work and that are getting picked and getting jobs and, and getting work. Um, I get emails from other people in other countries who say things like they can't visit places to show their portfolio because there just aren't any businesses near where they live. Um, now I'm sure that that's true here in the U S as well, but I mean, 
Uh, I know in some countries they they have really uh, repressed economies. They have really just it's almost impossible to make it as a freelance illustrator if they were just to work in their country versus here where you can actually visit places and show your portfolio and and start to beat the pavement and and, and drum up work uh i'll hear things where someone will say well my country doesn't have paypal you know so i can't how do i set up a store and i feel horrible for these people because they're they're trying they want some of what we have and i and i feel like some of these people are so hard working that if they were here their opportunity they would see the opportunity up here where where some of the people living here some of our citizens maybe see the opportunity down here um Another thing that I'll hear is my country has horrible internet, you know, and there really are. There are countries that just don't have high bandwidth. That's something that capitalism has given us. Um, you know, we have really good bandwidth. And when you have good bandwidth, you have more opportunity to do things in the arts. You can send files easy, more easily. You can um, you can do what I'm doing right now. You can talk to people more easily through video. Um you can share videos of your artwork. I mean, there's just amazing things that you can do when you have a higher bandwidth. Um, and then other countries put huge tariffs on top of goods and services that are exported from the U.S. So, you know, we make Cintiq monitors here from Wacom uh, and all the other goodies that they make. And some people have reported to me that their Cintiq monitors cost as much as $5,000. Um, imagine that. Uh, and, the you know, and so these are com countries that are, that where the where the government is in you know interfering more with the free market and because of that it's making it harder for artists so i you know that's one of the reasons why i embrace capitalism is because i say it's making my life easier um if this again this youtube conversation couldn't even happen without capitalism um let's see what else um you know if and this this is um this is some, another way to think of it. Um, you know, we're creating as artists, and this is probably goes to the crux of the, que of, the, of the question, is capitalism good for artists? We create unique things. There's nobody that creates like you. There's nobody that creates exactly like me. There's nobody that creates exactly like this other guy or this other gal. And because of that, if, if capitalism is going to work for anybody, it's going to work for the person who's creating a unique product. I mean, we used to have auto workers in this country, and rightfully so. They banded together and unionized to try to make sure that they could keep their, their rates up. And why did they have to do that? Because they're replaceable. They One auto worker can do exactly what the next guy does. And so they're cogs in a wheel. And the only way they can protect themselves is to band together and threaten to walk out, and I'm all for unionizing as long as it's not uh, government controlled. Uh, you know, they can they can they can do their best to kind of you know hold themselves hostage to make sure that the the company is paying them enough. Um, now, now those companies are most of those cars are made in other other countries, but you've got all these auto workers that are out of business. You've got a lot of people in other uh, sectors where their um, jobs have been outsourced to other countries. We've talked on this vlog before about Elance and Odesk and, and, and sites like that, where that has given a lot of opportunity to our neighbors in other countries. And it's taking a lot, taken a lot of opportunity out of this country. Um, but the cool thing is that the higher you get your artwork to, the higher level that you, that you attain, your work becomes more and more unique and it becomes i mean like why is why why did loish get $130,000 on her kickstarter in 2 hours it's because her work is at such a high level um and she's she's uh developed such a huge following online that um that as soon as she announced it people just went crazy for it because they want to have what she has because they can't get it from someone else um, so she is totally taking advantage of the capitalism, uh, the, the, the capitalism system. Um, and I personally think that if you are the type of person who feels like everyone should be paid the same, because again, there was a, um, an artist organization who I'm not going to name by name because they have this nasty habit of suing artists. I've talked about them before on this vlog. They make a book for pricing and ethics and guidelines and um 
you know, for a while, they wanted to get us unionized so that we would all be paid the same. Uh, that That's their thinking. That's what they thought. So if you worked your way up high, you would get paid the same as the person that's really low on the totem pole or just coming out of school. It didn't work because artists, in large part in mass, rejected that. Um, but if you're the type of person who feels like everybody should be paid the same, then in order to, to be consistent with that idea, I think that you should patronize restaurants that you hate because the people that are in the restaurants that you hate are working just as hard as the people in the restaurants that you like, right? And so if you're not patronizing the restaurants that you don't like, you're not spreading your money around evenly and you're only giving it to the one that you like and you're reinforcing the idea that the harder you work, and the better the product, the more patronage you will they will get and they will give. So it's inconsistent if you're not doing those sorts of things. Um, you know, if you're trying to get better as an artist, you're going to pass up other artists and you're going to take work away from them in theory. I mean, there's especially like, you know, I've talked about the, the, the freelance jobs that I've had recently. Um, the two that I'm working on right now, still working on them for... Um, random house and for the pharmaceutical company. And, um, uh, I was on both jobs. I had to, I was up against other artists and luckily, you know, I, I won both of those contracts. That means that those other two people didn't, um, didn't get to that, that work. Excuse me. Um, but that's always been the way that it is. It's, it's always been a survival of the fittest, um, economy and in some ways i personally think that's the best i i think that if i were paid the same from the very beginning that my work would not be to any level that it is now because early on and i've talked about this before i used to it seemed like every time i was up against other people for a job i never got it in fact my wife would joke about that and she would say she would tell me she didn't want to know about it um, don't tell me when you're up for a job only tell me if you land it I don't want to find out that you're up for it, get my hopes up, and then find out that someone else won that contract and you didn't. Um, so I stopped telling her. Um, and now, most of the time, I can I can say more than half of the time when I'm up for an assignment. This is many years later. This was this is tw over you know like 23 years later. I get most of them. I still lose them, but I get most of them now. Um, and so uh, let's, let's so let's move on to. Comic Con. Okay, so this is the this this is the second reason that why I'm making this. It's because I want to I want to talk about some of the strategies that I'm using um, in in this capitalistic uh, economy that we have to make more money for me and my family. And, and one of the things I'll say, you know, sometimes people will give you a hard time if you talk about making money, wanting to make more money, wanting to make more of this, wanting to have more of that. Um, you know, the way that I look at it is. Replace the word money with life. I mean, you cannot live without money. So am I going to apologize for wanting more life? No. Am I going to apologize for wanting more life for my kids and my wife? No. Um, you know, the more money that you make, especially if you're good with it. Um, and I've talked about that before too. One of the reasons why I can afford to pay for uh, offset printing, which is what I'm doing, um, is that I save money. Uh, went through and I, I went through a financial meltdown. Talked about that in another another video. You can go back and look at that. Um, and I had to learn the lessons the hard way. And now I hoard money. Um, you know, I I save and save and save and keep money off to the side, so that I can do things like uh, this Comic Con experience and the CTN right after it in November that I've got a table there, and I'll, I'm pr planning on doing a few more shows throughout the year. Um, uh, you know, I, I saved up for that, you know, so if I lose the money, it's not like I'm losing our, our mortgage money. It's not like we're losing money that we need to live on. This is extra that I've saved to be able to do this in hopes of making a little bit more money. But also this, the, the main part of this has been, I just want to break from doing client work and I want to do something that's really fun. Um, so I, I decided to use offset printing, uh, to get, more volume, more prints, and get my cost down. Now that's a bit of a gamble, and I and when I share, I, I told you in the earlier videos that I'm going to be sharing my facts and figures, so I will share all of this, the cost of the printing, 
the cost of the t-shirts and everything. Um, and I, it's not, what I'm doing is not necessarily the best example for the way that you should do it if you don't have a lot of money. But I will also share with you about what I think it would cost um, to do it if you weren't doing it the way that I'm doing it. Um, but I got my cost per print down to eight cents a print because of how many I got. And again, I'll share those figures on the next the next Comic-Con update video. Um, and I'm going to link, if I remember, which I should, I'm going to link below the printer that I used out here in Utah um, in case you want to work through them. Um, another, another thing that I'm going to do, another strategy, is I'm going to offer a buy to get one free on anything at my table. Um, so as long as you buy two things, you can get something of equal or lesser lesser value for free. Um, and um, I think that's how we're going to do it. But that's that's the plan right now. Uh, we'll see when we get to the table exactly how we word everything. But basically, that whole idea is to make someone think, well, you know, I spent $15. If I'm willing to spend another $15, I get two things plus that third thing for free. It's kind of the, the way that, that, uh, um, that marketers try to get you to spend a little bit more, you know? Um, and that's really, you know, selling volume, uh, is really probably the best way to make money, um, at these kinds of things. You know, I mean, if you don't have, if you don't have a deal, uh, then I think you're letting money walk away because I think a lot of people, are looking for a deal. And if you don't offer one, they're probably going to ask anyway. In fact, that's what I've been told uh, is that people will, will try to talk you down. I think if you already have a deal in place, then you already have a policy. And one thing that people I found people cannot argue with is when you say, well, that's just my policy. How do you argue with that? Well, it shouldn't be your policy. And that's just, it, it just is what it is. That's my policy. Um, so with that plan in, in mind, uh, that's another strategy. Uh, the simple fact, the simple reason that I wanted to do t-shirts is two reasons. One, my family wants them. <laughs> I want one or two. And, uh, but the, probably the bigger reason that I decided to go ahead and do that is I think, and this is just a hunch. This is all guesswork at this point because I haven't proved any of this. But I think that when you go along and you're walking along at different, different and seeing different tables and different setups, you're going to see prints, 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 especially in Artist Alley, right? Prints, prints, more prints, prints. And I think t-shirts are going to stand out. I think they're going to look different. I think it might actually catch people's eye to go, hmm, I wonder what's on that t-shirt. Um, so that's probably the big reason I'm going to do that. Again, I'll show you those t-shirts on the next one, either the next video or the one after that. Um, I also ordered a large display banner with my name big on it, and I will show you that as well. Um, one thing that I feel really strongly about is having good signage. Um, it's not that expensive, um, and if you design it really well and really clear and simple, I think that it can. It, it, it's definitely going to say something about you. Um, if you have really bad signage, it says, I think it would almost be better not to have any signage and to have really good artwork than to have bad signage and good artwork. That's just a theory of mine. But like when I'm going along and I look at people's booths and stuff, I am judging them. <laughs> we all, we're artists, right? We, we know what we like and what we don't like. And if someone has really bad lettering or a, just a really hokey sign or just looks really dumb for some reason, or if they say something stupid on it, you know, um, it, it's a reflection of that. It taints the whole booth. I almost think it'd be better just to have the, the standard name tag that they that comes with your booth and to just um, put really good artwork out there than it would to put a bad banner. Um, and then I ordered a large display because, um, and I'll show you that as well, um, and the reason for that is that um, your real estate goes up almost forever in the, in those large um, convention centers. And so you can put stuff really high up in the air. And that's one thing that I think a lot of people miss out on is uh, they just put stuff down on their table. And when when people are, if, if there's a crowd, and this is a really frustrating thing that I've heard from, from artists before is, 
let's say you get a table and you're next to uh, someone who is really popular or someone who's doing something unique and then they're going to have a crowd standing around their table and then their crowd is going to spill over in front of your table. Meanwhile, those people don't care about you, but the people walking by, now they can't even see what's on your table. So I think getting stuff up high in the air is going to help you combat those crowds when they start filtering through. Um, and again, that space up there is free as long as you can get something sturdy to, to put it up there. Um, so I think that's about it. The, the, the thing that I wanted to end with on this is just some of the different things where I feel like capitalism has made my life better in the last 20 years from when I first started as an artist. Um, you know, I didn't have, we didn't have iPhones. We didn't have, um, you know, smartphones. That alone, I can take pictures. Just the other day in school, I'm taking pictures of my students' work, and then I and I have it set so that it automatically uploads to Dropbox, and then I can download them here at home and set them up for my drawovers that I'm going to do on Tuesday in class. Um, that technology is brought to us from capitalism. I use my iPad all the time. I use my, my Cintiq all the time. Um, I use my webcam for instant reference. I've got pictures doing all kinds of crazy things with my hands, uh, you know, on the webcam and I just snap a picture and then I draw from it. Um, all that was not possible before, you know, um, my computer is super fast now. Um, I can send artwork lightning fast, huge files. We transfer, bam, for free. Um, again, doing drawovers in school. Uh, I, I have a classroom now that has Cintiq in it, but, but, uh, in the past, you know, I would, I would, uh, I, I what, what could I do? People would turn in their work, and I would talk about. It. I would, I would have to try to verbalize what I would do differently, and then they're not understanding, um, and or sometimes they are understanding. I mean, that's what what I had when I was in school is that the teacher would talk about your piece. Well, now I can paint over your piece, I can draw over it, I can show you exactly what I would have done differently. Thank you, capitalism. You made my life better. You made my students' life better, um, and of course, social media. Um, the, the ability to get the word out there, to create communities, the, the ability to um, share artwork has never been, never before um, been realized like it is now. And I just, the thing that I wonder is, and this is a side thing, this really doesn't have anything to do with capitalism, but, you know, when we were going to school 23 years ago, we, we had access to CA annuals when they came out once a year. And we had access to Society of Illustrators annuals when they came out once a year. And that was pretty much it. Uh, we had past annuals that we could look at. But if we want to see good work, we had to look in one of those two um, publications. And that was it. And now you get on Instagram. And, I mean, you can scroll forever. I wonder. This is just a, a question if you have something to say on that. Are our lives better because we can see more good artwork? Are we getting better faster because of that? That's just kind of a question that I've had. Anyway. Thanks for watching this video. Do not subscribe if you don't want to see more videos like this. And I will see you on the next one.